Welcome back everyone to On.net. I'm your host, James Montemagno, and today I am talking to two of my favorite people in the entire world, Mr. Burke and John. How's it going, fellas? What's hey. up? <laughs> am I now I'm, am I on on.net? That's unbelievable. You are on .net. Now, these two are world famous for their series, Burke Learns Blazer, which is right yeah. here on the .net YouTube. Uh, and if you've been following their journey, they've been building out an awesome website called, I call it the Earlist. Is that wrong? No, that's, yeah. It's like saying JSON instead of just Jason, right? Or right. saying GIF instead of GIF. It's it's the URList. Okay. So, I, really, yeah. I didn't want that name. That was just the only domain that I could find. Cecil and I agonized about this. You know what you should have called it, Burke? You should have called it Victorious Forest. <laughs> In <laughs> retrospect. But, right. I mean, we have the opportunity now. Yeah. yeah. Now, you two have been doing really cool stuff. Like, this was not a .NET website. You've been converting it to Blazor. Burke has been learning Blazor, hence the name yes. of the series, which I'll put a link in the show notes below. And what's really cool is that y'all not only have been converting this website, but also creating really cool Blazor components for features that Burke like needs and wants in this web application. And one of them that like blew my mind that you just put a blog post out, which I'll put a link in the show notes below, is this sortable list, which seems like super fundamental to a lot of applications. So I figure first, maybe we could talk about the earliest, show it off, talk about the feature, talk about the component how's that sound fellas yeah let's do that uh right, cool. you want to throw my screen up there we go bam all right john yeah okay so this site is awesome for tracking a list of links so the idea is let's say for instance like on this show we want to have a list of links to show off maybe you know a link wait to does this show have a url it, it uh youtube.com forward slash dot net so actually, let's go to the live site here and we'll do it on the live site. What is it? YouTube.com. YouTube.com forward slash what? Dot net. Dot net. D-O-T-N-E-T. -E like and subscribe. Right. Like and subscribe. Yes. Okay. So what it does. So then let's just put in D-O-T dot N-E-T. Let's add another URL there. Oh, I got a prefix. We fixed this, by the way, in the new oh. site. So this is an example of something that we have fixed in the newer version of the site, right? So some of the neat things it does there is you can give a, a link title, you can publish it, and you can share it with people. You can um, it, go, it uses Open Graph to go and look up the you know not just the description um, which you can edit later, but also the images. Again, like our newer version of the site does a better job because it implements like it digs through Open Graph data a little better. Um, Part of what got us looking at this was the login uses Twitter auth, which is flaky at best right now. And we were like wanting to fix it. And then we realized that the source code was not up to date. And it's actually like some of it dates back to like uh, 2019. And so we we're like, let's do this using modern static web apps and Blazor. Let's, you know, learn on the job. So. Um, so we've learned quite a bit of stuff. You can see there as he's going through and adding them. Now, one of the cool things we wanted to do was make it possible to rearrange that list of links. So here, so our newer version fixes this. But so see now, um, Bert, can you show the drag and drop? Yes. Yeah. So this was, I was very specific. So let me just preface this by saying I am not, I would not call myself a .NET developer, although I've done it in the past. I'm a front-end developer. And so I get really obsessed with the, the little things on the front end, like being able to, there's a lot of ways to reorder, but there's no better way than just being able to like drag stuff around to where you want it to go. And there's like this nice easing as things move out of the way. Mm -hmm. And I just really like that. And John and I got in a huge verbal argument because sure I was not willing. Yeah, it was bad. There was shouting, <laughs> which we should find that episode. <laughs> because, well, here's why I said, Burke, there is built into HTML now, HTML5 has drag and right. drop. I said, why don't we just use that? And Burke forced me to compare sortable JS, which is buttery smooth and just works like, like you'd expect in a desktop app or something. It's beautiful. HTML5 drag and drop is super janky. It, it does not move smoothly, it doesn't animate, and also it doesn't work on a, on like a Safari. And you know, so it's it's not near as good. It would have been a huge step back. Yeah, that makes yeah, a lot of sense. And and this is cool too, because like one, this website, you've probably actually seen a lot if you 
watching the live streams here because every single community standup uses this website. And mm -hmm. I noticed, Burke, that you flopped between the live one and then yeah, the this, one. So this is the live one. This is the one we're rebuilding, which is why looks, inside Victoria's Forest. It looks identical, by the way. Exactly. So great right. job. And Nailed I've it. already added some links here so mm -hmm. that we don't have to go back and do that again. Cool. But this is how the behavior looks in the, this is the Blazor site, right? And this is the behavior in the Blazor site, right? Which is nearly identical to the one in the live site. And that's because they're both using this underlying sortable JS library to do the sorting. Mm -hmm. That's the magic. Gotcha. So now that is a JavaScript library open source on GitHub. Correct. And obviously the beautiful part I have to imagine is that while you could use the HTML stuff, it's really cool if you're able to use the same exact functionality and then take this JavaScript thing and turn it into a Blazor component, right? Correct. Yeah. And I, I keep forgetting we're not live here, so I'm drinking my water. I apologize, viewers. <laughs> <laughs> Forgive me. But this is Sortable JS. And the, the great thing about these JavaScript libraries is that like drag and drop on the web is a solved problem like 10 years ago. And so they're battle hardened, right? Yeah. Like people have beat these things and then found all the bugs. And so now, the, and they have fallbacks, right? And so you don't have to reinvent this wheel. It's already been invented. And if you look at the sortable, so this is the sortable, um, this is their site. You're going to see our site looks very similar because I have not had an original thought in a long time. But this is the behavior, and it's fully customizable. But this is sortable JS, right? It's cool. just a really great library. Mm -hmm. So what does it? So we saw the the earliest side by side of it, and you said you have a demo site that's similar to this as well that people can we check do. out. We do, right? So if anybody wants to check this out, you can go to blazersortable.theurls.com, right? So I just made it a subdomain of this right here. I don't know if I was Scott Hanselman, I'd zoom in on this, but I don't know how. Wait, <laughs> did that work? Did that work? Uh, that did, did work. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Right. Okay. And you can see me searching for a, a refrigerator and um, shoes for plantar <laughs> fasciitis, which I now have. <laughs> awesome. So, so orthopedic shoes, what are you going to do? All right. So you also, we have the drag and drop feature, but you showed them the, the sortable JS that there's other features too. So did you buy in some of those other features we did. as well? Yeah. And we can, so we can show that. Let me go to yeah. mine here. Uh, mine, John, John, and sorry, John. It's all Bert. Bert uh, hours, this over. hours. He's kind of uh, December doing this. And what's right, cool, so, click on code there. So we can, yeah, this is the code this behind so cool. and we can actually get into this. We'll get into this and like, I'll show you how to implement this in your own project. Cool. But you can see there's not a lot to it, right? There's mm -hmm. basically like the component and then there's you you doing the sorting because um, the, the catch here is that Blazor needs to control the front end. And mm -hmm. it's, we're very specific. Like if, if you read the docs, it says, uh, please do not mutate the DOM in any way, shape, or form. So here's the code. We'll, we'll talk about this code here. It's very short. You can see this is the component. All of the drag and drop magic is encapsulated pretty much here. The only thing that you as the developer have to do is to sort the actual items. And this is because Blazor needs to control the UI. It needs to control the DOM, the document object model. And mm -hmm. if you mutate that with JavaScript, then it's going to get out of sync with what Blazor has, because Blazor keeps like a copy in its internal uh, in its in its internal memory or whatever that is. Those things, two things, will be in conflict, and you'll get crazy behavior, which is exactly mm -hmm. what happened to me. Mm -hmm. And that's where Steve Sanderson actually is part of this as well, because he came in and was like, "Oh yeah, here's why." Yeah. Uh, and I'll explain when we actually show off how to use the thing, what we have to do to stop that from happening. So that was great, by the way, to be able to, we used our phone, a friend, we called Steve Sanderson, we're like, what's going on here? And he basically talked through what Burke was just saying, that Blazor needs to own the DOM because it does all the, the binding and the change tracking and all that mm -hmm. stuff. So, so you can use JavaScript libraries with Blazor, works awesome. The one catch is you basically, and Burke will show this, but you basically need to, you Use the JavaScript library. It does all the beautiful animations. And right when it's going to change the DOM, you say, no, thanks. Blazor, please change the DOM. And you, you, it. you kick it back over to Blazor. Very cool. Yeah, exactly what happens. You cancel the event on the front end, and mm -hmm. you pass it over to Blazor. And so I'm just going through the demos here. But we've got, you know, you can move between lists here. Um, you can do cloning. Cloning is where instead of actually moving the item, you're 
you know, you, it clones it uh-huh. on the second list. Cool. Uh, in this case, yeah, they're cloned from in both directions. Right. Things like disabling sorting. So in this case, you can't sort these items, but you can put them over here. Hmm. But you can't sort them here. And likewise, you can't drag into this list. Nice. And then things like drag handles. This is important when like you have text that still needs to be highlighted here. But if you if you the dragging would override that. So by putting a handle on it, then you're able to implement that. And then things like filtering where this item is not draggable, but the rest of the items are. Oh, cool. So there's a lot of functionality there. Not everything from sortable JS has been implemented here, but a lot of the core features have. Cool. Do you want to show off how to get it into an app? I mean, Let's it do seems, it. Doesn't seem like a lot of code. Let's head over to your favorite IDE. I don't know. That, that's <laughs> right. You may have heard of it. It's called Visual Studio Code. I'm using the uh, C Sharp Dev Kit, by the way. Nice, beautiful. It's beautiful. the only way. It's the only way to. He's a big fan. I've, t- I've, I've talked him into it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. So this is an empty Blazor WebAssembly app. Also, we should clarify and be like, what I'm doing today is Blazor WebAssembly. I have no idea how much this transfers to Blazor Server because it's Burke learns Blazor, not Burke knows Blazor. Right? <laughs> so you have to find someone who knows Blazor to answer that question. All right, so we have this hello world. Let's add a component, and I've just got this, this dummy component. We want to add the um, sortable list to this project. So I've downloaded it. If you go to GitHub, where's my, where's our, look, look, look. Where's, uh, there it is. So go to the top, just click right here, and then you can go to releases, right? And then just get the latest release. It's all the source code. I don't know how better to deliver this. Because again, we can do a NuGet package. Yeah, we can make package. a NuGet package. I don't know how to put it into a class library. Uh, as yeah, John fine. said he's going to do yeah. on his vacation. So I'm looking forward to that. Coming soon. Right. <laughs> All right. So I've downloaded it here. Now let's add them into the project. So let's open this folder here. And we're just going to drag this stuff over. And now we've got them in our uh, shared here. So right. you can see here, I've got file nesting turned on in Visual Studio Code, which puts like like files underneath. I've configured this. That's why it shows up like this because these files are related to this one. So, okay, let's use this thing. So instead of saying hello world, so first of all, let's let's do this. Let me go into the WW root and let's add, I'm going to add in a couple things here. I'm just going to add in um, some CSS to make this pretty. Uh, and I think maybe that's all we need. Oh, and then I'm going to add in sortable JS. So the first thing you need to do is actually add sortable JS because we don't, we're not delivering we sort of it. Yeah, yeah. You need sortable. So you can just add it there from a CDN like I did. And then in our index file here, uh, we should be ready to use this thing. So let's write a little code. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a um, some markup here. Uh, and this is, you know, this is not important. This is like just Bulma classes and stuff, so we can have a nice interface. Um, While he's doing that, I'll explain some neat things. He's using Emmet here, um, which you can basically type in the selectors, and it'll write out the HTML for those selectors, which is awesome. And then Bulma yeah. is something that Burke turned me on to, and I'm a big fan now. It's a really nice kind of – it's a lightweight CSS library. Um, yes. And, uh, I like it. Yep. So you can see there we've got some nice like spacing and this is uh, cool. I like to center the text. It's like this, you know, it's a CSS library. You can do all kinds of cool stuff with it. Okay. So let's let's make a sortable list. And so we need our sortable list. And then we need some items to put in that sortable list. So like let's just make a class, like a <laughs> it already knows what I'm gonna do. <laughs> Come on. Come on, copilot. Come on, copilot. Yeah, too and good. then let's like get a list of children's books. Maybe Which near a bar or, or is it a oh there oh, it is. Smokes. <laughs> Gave us a bunch, didn't it? Yeah. Beautiful. Now now it's like I can't I can't I can't see where the what am I missing? <laughs> it's maybe too many books. It's too many books. Do I need it's to do that? Well child. Yeah. And it's a lot of books. No, that's still wrong. I'll tell you what, let's take out like half these books. Yeah. There you go. Okay. It is possible to have too many books. We figure out what's going on here. Uh, So what do we got? I just need one more squiggly. One more. Where, where, where? where? Right there. Yeah. Right there? Like that? Yep. 
and then kind a of. semicolon. A semicolon? Yep. There you go. Okay. Yeah, that looks good. I don't know why it's not. Why isn't it formatting? Format my because I must have an error up here. Yeah, it doesn't like this. So on our sortable list, let, we need some items. So one of the properties is items. And then let's add our books. And then we need to have uh, pass a context and the context will just be book. We could call this anything, right? We could literally call it anything. It doesn't matter. This is just like the name that the thing will be inside of the, for each item, right? Like in a for loop you, or like, what's another good example? Like for item of items, then the thing is called item. That's what this is. So we'll just call this book. Yeah. And then let's just make this a uh, sortable item template is the inner template thing that you need. And then in here, you just put like whatever you want. Uh, so in our case, like, let's just write out, let's just have a div and inside of that, we'll do like book dot title. Um, and then that should, is it still mad? I don't think you're good. Oh. I think so. Rude it's a rude edit. Yeah. So rude. Burke is the rudest of editors. <laughs> yeah. John said that this morning. So I was like, this is the rudest of edits. <laughs> that was hilarious. I still don't know why it's not format. Format my document. All right. It says no. Um, so assuming that there's no errors, which I don't think there are, let's see if this is rendering us some books. Well, cool. It is. Uh, mm -hmm. And are they sortable? They are. Now let's do this. I'm just going to add it's like styling here because this doesn't great. It's like uh, let's just put this, make this a box and like set the margin to two or something. Uh, that should look better. There we go. So now this. But notice like when I drop this, it just goes back to where it was. Yeah. 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 So like it it so doesn't this is that interaction with Blazor, right? We we let JavaScript do the the pretty right. nice. And then we tell Blazor, okay, now do the work. Right. So how do we do that? So we need to handle the method. Um, specifically, what we want to handle here is the uh, on update. So there's sort of there's two methods there right now: on remove and on update. On remove is good for when you're removing an item from a list and putting it in another. On update happens when you uh, when you sort a list. So in this case, like let's just have a function called sort list that we're going to call. And then let's implement it. Um, Copilot is probably going to try to do it for us. Uh, yeah. Do something with the sorted list. Yeah, Copilot. Great idea. How about you sort the list? Uh, I don't actually know if this will work. So what we need to do here is what you get from the uh, sort the sort operation that happens in the browser is just like primitive integer types. So you get like this old index, and then you get uh, a new index. And it comes across as a tuple because because it's being called, it's being passed back up, and that's just you can't. That's how you pass multiple component, multiple parameters in Blazor. But again, maybe not. Burke learns Blazor. Burke doesn't know. <laughs> I think we've established. Okay, okay. Um, so yeah, now we want to sort the list. So first of all, we need to deconstruct the tuple. Uh, and I'm, again, I'm just doing this so that. Copilot will help me out a lot here. And then um, I think I'm going to make a copy of the list just so that I'm not working with it directly. Um, and then let's get the item that we want to move, which is going to be the item at the old index. Copilot's catching on. And then let's remove it. Um, we'll do items.remove at old index. It's not called items. What is this? Like this stuff, books? Books. books. All right, and then what we want to do here is, um, I mean, and in fact, let's go back and look here. So if we do this, we'll probably just remove it. So it does, so now it's gone. So now we just need to put it in the right place, which seems pretty straightforward. Um, all you really need to do here is add a check. So what you want to do is you want to check and say, if the new index is less than uh, items.count, right? So you're basically saying, if the index is less than the total number of items in the list, then just drop mm -hmm. it at whatever index. Mm -hmm. and, and what we're doing here is checking for the case that it's at the very end. Yeah, <laughs> right? that in makes this sense. case, we're going to do items.insert at the new index and the item to move. Whoops. Items. I think that code's right, isn't it? No. Kind of. It's close. Else, items.add. Yeah, that code is right. I should just take that. Thank you. 
And then I think we need to call state has changed, but I don't know. So let's try it without state has changed. As, we yeah. just sprinkle state has changed on it when we're not sure. Right. If, if something yeah. isn't working in Blazor, just add state has changed and it will yeah. magically. There we go. Boom. Right? Whoa. Amazing. So, yeah. So now we've got an actual sort that's taking place. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you were to go and like, you know, log out the list that you've got here, the books, your model is in sync with the, with the UI, which is important. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So super simple, just a very lightweight component and probably you're ordering and sorting things already. I come from the, the, the mobile world. So your sorting list is very similar like that, where you're kind of controlling it and getting the updates on drop basically yeah. and changing yeah. it locally, uh, which makes sense because not like the JavaScript world knows about your C sharp list of things. Right. So you're kind of making that exactly problem. right. There, there is two different worlds that need yeah. to coexist. They need to, to, to play nicely. And the thing that's great about this is that, I don't know if we want to go back into the implementation real quick and just show this off, but this is yeah. not that hard to do, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Anyone can do this. If you find a JavaScript library, you can absolutely do this. I think that'd be this super cool. Yeah, because it's one of like, my biggest takeaways there was that, like, basically, you can any JavaScript library plays pretty nicely with Blazor once you know what you're doing there. So. There you go. Yeah. So let's, yeah, I would love to take a look at the implementation and then maybe some lessons learned too, because mm -hmm. sounds like you learned a little bit of the how the DOM and the shadow DOM stuff works. Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk about this real quick. So in this case, there's a lot of stuff in here that's like render fragments. And, and this is because I made it into a component. It, it, you don't need any of this stuff, okay? This is only for a reusable component. What's important here is that if you had a, a list that you wanted to turn into a sortable list, then you need the JavaScript to do that. Mm. And this looks like a lot, but this is all just sortable JS's stuff. And so basically what you do is you have a function, this is what I did called a knit, and then you just pass it anything you wanna pass it from .NET. And how do you do that? Well, when you, uh, after render, if it's the first render, you're gonna use this .NET object reference, you're gonna create it here, and then you're going to invoke and import that JavaScript file. You can see I'm pointing it right here. And what's nice about this is the JavaScript that's doing this is co-located with the component. Yeah. So that if somebody else comes in, they're like, where's this JavaScript? It's right there. Yeah. Which is, which is awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. And then I'm calling that init, right, from the JavaScript. And here's all the stuff I'm passing. And then the last parameter is just a reference to this, this uh, component right here. And that's it, right? To get the stuff into JavaScript, that's all you have to do. And then here you can see on update, this is, the, this is really what Steve helped us with is revert the DOM. So basically mm -hmm. we're just canceling the JavaScript event and then notify.net about the, the change. So we call on update, we pass the old index and the new index. Mm -hmm. And we handle that in this JS invocable, right? Here it is, old index and new index, and that's it. And, and we have a component, so again, I'm, I'm bubbling it up here, but if you were just doing this and not trying to create a reusable component, just handle your sort right there or whatever you're doing. Mm -hmm. So that's cool. Uh, that's these so two that. worlds talking back and forth. So your C-sharp talking to your JavaScript, your JavaScript talking to your C-sharp back and forth that you're going to use. Exactly. Yeah. Talking across the bridge, the, the JS interop. And it when you first get to using it, you're like, oh, this is going to be hard. But then once you understand how to get the JavaScript in, which is to import it, put it in a module, and then call this little init method, it's mm -hmm. very straightforward. <laughs> That's awesome. Any like and sort you, of lessons learned on this thing too? Yeah. So a couple of things that I've learned, and, and this is not necessarily a sortable thing, but for instance, on this on this list, if you do so, let, so let's come to our index page. It's probably the best way to do this and create, I'm going to add a new file here and call it, uh, um, oh, that's right, razor, pay, razor. No, I don't want a template. How do I do it without a template? Custom file, okay, index.razor.css. So let's say that we wanted to style these items here, right? Yeah. These, this item here. So let's give this thing like a class of um, book, okay? And then we wanted to style it in our scope CSS. So if we did normally, we could just do this, you know, and say, you know, uh, blazer background color. What are the odds that 
Copilot knows what this is. Something. Hopefully purple. <laughs> no, it's, it's, no, that's totally wrong. Um, I would do dot .NET background color. Dot .NET background? Oh, that's probably better. Uh, let's see here. Come on, get out of here. Get out dot of here. .NET brand background color or something. Yeah, dot .NET brand. I'm We've been it. doing this with like GitHub or Facebook or whatever, and it picks the right CSS colors for us. Yeah, it oh, typically nice. knows. Uh, so what did it give us here? An that's extra correct. Really want that. okay, come oh, on oh. Right? see? <laughs> that is the correct that's, color, by the way, in case anyone was. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> James has it memorized. So we, we've yeah. applied this, and just to be sure, um, because, well, let's refresh and just see. But you'll notice here that, like, it doesn't take. Mm. And when you're if you're creating a sortable list like this, you run with a style, and you're like, why doesn't it take? And the reason is because in Blazor, it only applies the style to this thing. It doesn't apply it to this stuff down here. And if you want it to do that, then you need to add the, um, it's called the deep modifier. So let me see here. It looks like this. So if you come in here and say like this. Oh, interesting. Here, right. And we save it. Oh. Now it should. And sometimes you have to, so it's uh read at it. Yeah, with styles, with um, scope styles, sometimes you need to rebuild, I've seen. But that makes sense. There's some intricacies in the the deeper RSS or CSS. In the styling, yeah. yeah. And generally, I've learned this when you're working with Blazor, like if your style isn't taking, try this. <laughs> <laughs> We've been using the scope CSS very heavily and, and it really keeps the, the Blazor, like otherwise you end up with this huge CSS file. Okay. Right. Beautiful. That kind of yeah. works. And so now it's applied. Uh, it looks terrible, but. Uh, Very cool. Yeah. John, I know uh, it sounds sound like you had something that you also learned during this. Well, yeah. One thing that was interesting to me was Steve told us like, so number one, mutating the DOM, JavaScript, and the framework are confusing. But he also pointed out to us that people in Sortable JS have been running into the same issues when using like Vue or other JavaScript libraries. Mm -hmm. Basically, any library that controls the DOM is going to conflict with a JavaScript library that's also changing the DOM, right? So I had I had this thing in my head that it was like, this is a Blazor WebAssembly thing. It's like, no, nope, just multiple things interacting with the DOM. So I think that was a big part of it. Yeah, it's very cool. And it's great also that, you know, it's just, since they're just files currently, and eventually it will be a NuGet, right? Mm -hmm. That you could modify any of this stuff to your liking, right? So if you want to change any of those, default CSS is stuff in the JS file. Like you could technically, if you wanted to yeah. or add more other features to it, you can just grab those files and go. Um, one other thing as Burke's writing, this is so fast, man, this is great. Um, one other neat thing is that it is an open source library. We've got the, the link to the um, job or to the GitHub project. If people want to improve it, add other features in or whatever they can, you know, they, along with the URL list, we're open for pull requests there too. Yeah, so all I'm doing here is I'm creating like a, I'm just handling the case where we want to have two lists that we can drag and drop between. I'm doing this on the fly. Oh, it's rebuilding. I'm doing this on the fly, so if it doesn't work, don't be surprised at all. But will it work? Yeah, uh, almost. <laughs> Actually, the problem is, you know what the problem is? The div is like a zero height, so it can't. Oh. I have to change that. But that's how you would do that, right? You basically mm -hmm. pass in just the group name, and then you can drag between these two lists. There's one other thing that I wanted to talk about, James, while yeah. we were here. Um, and I believe it was this. So there are some decisions that I make for you with Sortable. And that's specifically, it's that the, a certain visual experience. And so if we go back here, you can see that, see how the thing like moves out of the way? This is not yeah. the default experience. And I'm doing this with styling here. And so if you take this styling out like this, and let's refresh, um, you'll see a different, you see this here? This mm. is what the default is, where you have this like ghost element. And oh, yeah. so some people might like this and it might be better like, okay, so it's better here because now I can see that I can actually move mm. the thing, right? Now yeah. pr provided I'm, hand I'm not handling the events, so the event's getting canceled. Yeah. But before we couldn't see it, now we can see it. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. And so the other thing is I've made that um, the other, the other decision I made is that I always force it to fall back to H to uh, JavaScript, but the library itself is designed to use HTML five drag and drop by default and to fall back on your behalf when the browser doesn't support all the events that it needs. However, if we do that, then we get HTML five drag and drop behavior, mm. which it's like, some people like this. I'm not a huge fan, uh, like the transparency of the element here. And so I like you literally cannot, the thing that I'm dragging cannot be styled at all. What you see right here is what you get. So if you want to be able to style this element, you need to force the fallback, which is what I do. Just some small things. Flexible though. Flexible, I like to say. Well, thank you. Yeah, well, thank you, gentlemen, for showing this off. I'm sure that it'll be very useful, and I'll put links to everything in the show notes. It's also cool, and you can are you continuing your journey? Do you still have like a long ways? How far? How long until Burke knows Blazor? <laughs> well, we're 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 doing our Series A actually coming up pretty soon, James. I'm keeping it on that, but <laughs> we are. Right. How long until Burke knows Blazor? Like never. But we are. We're getting really close, John. Are mm-hmm. we not? I mean, we've got more features on our site than we had in the original. So it really is. Now we're into a point of like, hey, how do we manage how big the the page load is and some stuff like that, right? Exactly. (laughs) Well, cool. Well, thank you both for showing this off. I appreciate it. And of course, you can check out Burke and John on Fridays on the .NET YouTube and on Twitch as well. Well, thank you so much for coming on and showing this off. We'll put all the links in the show notes. We'll catch y'all later and we'll catch you later right here on the .NET YouTube. Thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to jam that like button, ring that notification bell because you've hit subscribe and you get all the notifications whenever we put out a new video right here on the .NET YouTube. Thank you so much for watching. I'm James and this has been on .NET.